I warmly and deeply welcome you back to Cheater Story Sundays. Today is June 1st, 2019. Okay, early 2000s, my friend's husband was deployed to Iraq. Together, they had a 10-year-old son and a happy marriage. One day while he was deployed, I'm at home when another one of our friends calls and screams, holy shit, turn on the news right now. I turn it on to watch a human interest story about a fundraiser at a high school 30 miles away. There on our local news is my friend's husband telling another woman with two kids how he loves them and can't wait to get back home to them. The news eats it up about what a great guy he is. That night, our group of friends convened and decided how we should tell her. <sighs> okay, this must be a really big group of friends. I was nominated, so the next day I had to sit her down and tell her what we saw. She called the news station and they were happy to let her come in and watch the story. They were also incredibly apologetic. The story has a somewhat crappy ending. She called him out, they started divorce proceedings, and he went on to legally marry the... Oh my gosh. He went on to legally marry the mother of his other kids and mostly ignored his son from the first marriage. This guy told his other wife that he was deployed to Iraq, but he wasn't. He was 30 miles away with his other family. And so I guess he would go back and forth. That's how he juggled it. Cause if he's telling his other family that he's about to deploy, so most likely he was going back to the other family, 30 miles east. <laughs> That's messed up. Wow. Okay. All right, story number two. My brother was at a small party with two friends and his wife. He got tired and wanted to head home. His wife stayed behind. She gave some lame excuse and begged off going with them. His best buddy was there and would make sure she got home safe for him. He got in his car, pulled out of the driveway. Before he could get on down the block, he checked his rear view and noticed the room in the house they were all in had gone dark. He never really thought anything like what he was about to see was actually possible. So he had been suspecting for some time that something was up with her. Like he knew something was wrong, but he just couldn't put his finger on it. So seeing the lights out crystallized the situation for him and he turned right around. The house was dark. The front door was still unlocked. He walked right in into the only room with any light. He opened the door to find his best friend and another acquaintance double teaming his soon to be ex. He hasn't really been the same since. Cause you know what? When you find out some shit like that, you start to question your entire relationship with this person. All these memories start to flood back. You start to question like, when were they doing it? And how long were they doing it? And where was I when they were doing it? What about that time? What about this time? Were they thinking about that person or those people. So when a person is messed up and they're not quite the same after they get cheated on, I think it's because they have those obsessive, repetitive thoughts that keep ruminating and ruminating over and over. That's what makes a person not the same because those thoughts keep you, they hold you back and they keep you in that moment. Yet, you're not in that moment, but they keep you there. So you seem like you might seem a little off to be, it's really hard to snap yourself out of that. Really, you just kind of got to forget, like block it out so that you can return like back to normal, or at least somewhat normal. And then like from that point on, you start to like question yourself, you question your judgment, you question your decision making. You can't trust your eyes. You can't trust your thoughts. You can't trust that little voice inside you, you 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 doubt it you doubt everything you doubt other people you can't trust other people when someone says oh no don't worry you go ahead and i'll meet you you won't be like hell no anyway i'm going off on a tangent okay next story came home early to surprise him with birthday dinner i walk in the front door and hear the unmistakable sound of people fucking go to our bedroom and he's balls deep in some girl I chucked my keys at his lying, cheating, stupid face and called him some choice names. Told the girl if she wanted to get out with her face and her weave intact, she'd best leave right now. 
slammed the door shut and she was dressed and out of the bedroom seconds later. She apologized and said she didn't understand what was going on, but was getting out. He stayed holed up in the bedroom for almost an hour, <laughs> which was more than long enough for me to go from just angry to rage. By the time he showed his lying, cheating, stupid face, I could not have been more worked up. After a brief attempt to tell me she meant nothing, he figured out he figured out talking wasn't going to fix things and left. That could have ended uh, very bad. Like someone could have ended up dead. Someone could have ended up in prison. When you're screwing with someone's emotions, you're screwing with their mental health, their mental stability, their emotional stability. You can make someone break mentally. You can make someone temporarily insane enough to murder you and everyone else in the room or at least try I don't think people understand the gravity of the situation when you get caught someone can get killed I don't even know what I don't even know what I would do if I walked in <sighs> If I walked in, oh my God. I honestly do not think that they would walk out. I don't think anyone would walk out, physically walk out on their own ability. I don't think I would handle it that well. And you guys tell me, how would you handle it if you walk in, you walk in with your, with someone balls deep and some other female and vice versa, I mean, you guys, let me know. Leave some comments. Leave some messages for me. What would you do? I would love to hear other people's reactions. Like, brainstorm. Like, what do you think you would do? Or what would you like to do? Okay, next one. Okay. One of my coworkers ran into her then boyfriend's house to get her phone charger before work. She walked into his bedroom and found him in bed with another woman. She then took a picture of them in bed and sent it to his mother. I think that's a great idea. I would definitely take a picture or video or something to prove because these, these motherfuckers be lying. They be lying. Like if I am physically, mentally capable, if I'm thinking that well, I would definitely take a video or photo or something and broadcast it. I probably wouldn't share it like right away. I don't know, but I would definitely get some proof of it because again, these people be lying, have everyone thinking that you're tripping, that you're just making up shit. Okay, so she was having computer problems and wanted to go on Facebook on my phone. No problem, but I made her use Safari so I wouldn't have to log out of the app. Anyways, a couple of days later, I'm closing tabs on my phone and there is her Facebook still open. Well, I see she's chatting with her ex, John. Turns out they banged in our bed and we're gonna go out on a date soon. Oh my gosh. <sighs> That's so messed up. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, so there's more. <laughs> I didn't know there was more. So in the messages, he asked that she wear something nice. I'm not the jealous type, so I leave it for a couple of days. Couple days go by and she wants to make love. Well, we are kissing and getting hot and heavy. I whisper in her ear, don't forget John wants you to wear something nice on your date Saturday. The look of horror in her eyes was magical. I put my shirt on and start walking out as she's crying and saying she's sorry. Gosh, I wish I could be that cool. That was almost like creepy the way he did that. That was kind of strange. It was cool, but a little strange. Um, I salute him for being able to handle it that well. Okay, next one. Okay, I had to take lunch an hour early one day to cover for my sick boss that night. One of us had to be there at all times. I opened the front door and there they were on the couch, clothes scattered on the floor, scurrying to cover up. It's burned into my head. At that point, it gets blurry though. I froze for a second. I started seeing red and knew that if I didn't get out of there, something bad would happen. So I left. I got in my car, 
locked the door, turned off my cell phone, and started driving. I went back to work and pretended nothing happened. She tried to call me, and I always said I was on another line and would call back when I could. All right, so I guess this is the same day. She showed up about two hours before I got off and I had them tell her I was with a customer. She went back home eventually, but I didn't. I slept in my car that night. I drove out on the local scenic parkway, parked at an overlook and just sat on the hood of my car, devastated. I didn't move the entire night. I couldn't sleep. When I went home, it was only because I had to work the next day. She asked if we could have an open relationship. I said no. She kept cheating. We divorced. Oh my gosh. These stories, they're all unique in the way that they're written and the way that they're told and how the stories come apart and how they're laid out, how the pieces are laid out in front of me. They're all so different and unique. And this one really got under my skin. The fact that she had the nerve to ask for an open relationship. It's too late for that. It was way too late for that. And then the fact that she kept cheating. I need more details. I need more details. She kept cheating? Like how long did this go on? I can imagine this guy kept avoiding her. He probably realized she was still cheating at some point and then filed for divorce. And then, you know, to have to continue interacting with this disgusting person and remain, you know, calm and, you know, just, oh, it's just so, it's just so horrible. All right, next one. I was dating my neighbor and his door was 10 feet away from my front door. One night I had some friends over and he went out with his friends. We had some Nerf toys at my apartment and my friend shot me in the eye and scratched my cornea. Ooh, that sucks. It was so painful. It was pretty late at night and I had been drinking. So I decided the best thing to do was just take some allergy medicine and fall asleep into a Benadryl coma. I woke up the next morning and was in so much pain. I couldn't open my eye and crying made it burn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's not funny. Okay, so. <laughs> I mean, she started, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why that, um, uh, I don't know why that was funny to me. Anyway, so I ran over to my boyfriend's apartment. I knew this was coming, you guys. I already know, I already know. <sighs> she let herself in, cause we have copies of each other's keys. Of course, of course they do. And as I was going up the stairs to his room, I kept thinking, hmm, women's shoes, how weird. And I wonder whose pants those are? But I was so set on having him drive me to the emergency room. So I just busted into his room and there he was in bed with his best girlfriend. They hadn't heard me come in. So I just stood there for an uncomfortably long time. I ended up slamming the door behind me, running back to my apartment. My roommate eventually came in and dragged me to the ER where I was then told I had an infection in my eye and had to get it flushed out. A bad day. That really sucks. Okay, next one. A friend of mine was dating this guy for seven years before they finally got married. They got divorced after one month of being married because she found out that he was cheating on her with her maid of honor. The maid of honor tried to get him to go for alimony too. Well, let me get this straight. They start the divorce and her maid of honor, most likely her best friend, uh try to get him to collect alimony i'm sorry guys it's late at night so i'm a little you know sleepy anyway so this maid of honor must have hated her these people are just like the best actors in the world or this girl was just like totally oblivious and trust trusting sad that you can't trust anyone but you really can't you cannot trust anyone you can't trust nobody i'm to the point now where i couldn't even be a relationship counselor because my answer to everything would be just be single just be single and enjoy your life that would be my answer for every couple you guys need to separate you guys need to divorce you guys need to separate now if they have kids then that's a little different but like 
you can't trust anybody. Period. One of the nicest guys I've ever met, training to be a trauma surgeon, had been married for two years to his wife. One night, he gets off a call early and heads home to surprise his wife with some flowers and her favorite dessert. It was the anniversary of the day they first met. Aww. Only to find her in bed with a random dude. He was so exhausted and confused, he didn't know what to do and just left and went back to the hospital. I saw him at 5 a.m. sitting in the parking lot, hunched over, crying. He didn't even have his phone with him. He was just sitting there. We called his dad up and he came and picked him up. The guy ended up taking a leave from his residency. Turns out it wasn't the wife's first time sleeping around. Hope he gets back on his feet. He will make an amazing physician. That one got under my skin too. I don't know, maybe it's my hormones today, but I know I don't think so because all these stories are absolutely horrifying and I I'm just so empathetic and I can just really put myself in these people's shoes and that one just really you know this guy he's trying to make a difference sounds like he's committed and faithful to his wife and it's just sad when people take you for granted she took him for granted all right next story the worst vacation ever i was in florida on vacation with my girlfriend of six years our four-year-old son her family and a few of her friends she had been taking pictures down at the beach all afternoon on her phone we got back to the house we were staying at and everyone was in the kitchen making dinner i picked up her phone and opened it up to text my family the pictures she had taken as i'm scrolling for the thread I see her ex-boyfriend's name, open up the messages, and first thing, there are videos of them touching themselves that they had sent to each other. I yelled, what the fuck is this? Her mom turned toward me and asked what was wrong, and I loudly, and I, <laughs> and I loudly proclaimed what I'd seen. Girlfriend said that she had gone out with some friends, gotten wasted, and invited him out for a drink claimed that was the only time she'd seen him. Yeah, so when she fell asleep, of course, I went through her phone again. She'd seen him multiple times throughout the previous two months, and I found pictures of them together, posing like a cutesy couple on their dates. Her brother and dad were pissed. <laughs> pissed at who though? Pissed at her? I got the fuck out of there the next morning, ruined the vacation for pretty much everyone and totally wrecked our family. Uh, he says that he wrecked the family and the vacation, but as from what I see, she's the one that wrecked everything. I mean, that's so awkward because they were with her family. They were with the cheater's family. Family always will take your side. Even when you're wrong, they take your side. I mean, generally, you know, so I feel bad for the guy. He had like no one in his corner, basically. All right, next story. Caught by the sister. I was out at a bar with a few of my friends. We walk in and there is my sister's boyfriend making out with someone who was not my sister. I've had a couple of drinks at this point and decided I wanted to be evil. I wait until the girl who's making out with my sister's boyfriend comes over to the bar. I strike up a conversation with her to see if I can get some information out of her. I ask her about her date and I ask her about her date and she goes into this long story about how they dated back in high school but broke up and now he's dating someone else but doesn't care because the other girl's a total prude and what they have is true love. <laughs> I let her say her spiel until I introduce myself with my first and last name. She immediately starts sputtering something and I walk away to call my sister. Meanwhile, the shitty boyfriend is across the bar being filled in on what just happened. He immediately calls my sister and tells her that I'm a liar and he's still at work. I sent her pictures of the two of them together and they ended up breaking up the next day. See, she took pictures. See what I said earlier? They will lie. They will lie. They will lie their ass off. That's why you have to collect evidence. Next story. At least she got a new best friend. 
We had a huge fight the evening before regarding his odd behavior and this girl in his life that I didn't feel comfortable with. She ended up messaging me afterwards to assure me that they are like siblings and nothing would ever happen. Fast forward to the next day, I get a message from his best friend asking when he was coming back. So I called and told him we haven't spoken since our argument. My ex told his friend that he was coming over to make up with me and would be back in an hour, four hours ago. He had his phone off, which never happens. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he got in a car accident on the highway between our houses or something of that nature. Went for a drive with his friends, stopped at a couple common stops of his, nothing. So she went looking for him. Then I figured I would check one last spot, her house. Sure enough, there he was parked in the driveway. They didn't even make it inside. His best friend hopped out of my car, banged on his window where they were buck naked, yelled, you got some shit to fix and ran back to my car. X kicked the chick out naked on her driveway and the car chase ensued down the highway back to my place where he begged and pleaded with me saying it wasn't what it looked like, blah, blah, blah. And that was the end of that. Bonus, his best friend became my best friend instead after that. So the cheating boyfriend's best friend helps her track down the cheating boyfriend and then after all the shit hits the fan, he ends up becoming her best friend. I also like the fact that he kicked that girl out on her driveway, kicked her out naked. That's what she gets. She had just told the girl, oh, we're like brother and sister, nothing would ever happen. And there they are the next day in the car. And most likely they had been fooling around for a long time. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the first time that you know they did some things. All right, next story. It's always good when the story of a man with two girlfriends ends like this. Okay, let's find out. He agreed to meet me for lunch on my birthday at work. My manager decided to let me out a few minutes early and I saw him being dropped off by another girl who kissed him goodbye and drove off. It turns out neither one of us knew about the other and thought we were dating a sweet guy, not a fuck boy. We both dumped him and became pretty good friends. I even went to her wedding in December. Life can be funny sometimes. It sure can. All right, next one. She'll never finish Zero Dark Thirty now. That's the title, let's see. My ex fiance and I had been together six years. I sold my condo, got rid of my furniture, moved out to the suburbs, essentially gave up my life. I commuted over an hour to work. Just to give you an idea of what kind of selfish guy this is. I was in the living room upstairs watching Zero Dark Thirty on Netflix, which he refused to watch for some reason. He was in the basement playing around on a guitar. The house was old, built in the 40s, and still had the original floors. During a quiet part of the movie, I heard him open the laundry room door downstairs, and he started talking to someone on his cell and telling them he loved them and calling them baby. I go downstairs to confront him, he tried to deny it, but eventually it comes out that this is a woman he works with. It's been going on for three months. This dirtbag strikes up a relationship with a co-worker. And if they've been dating for three months, I'm pretty sure there was some shit going on before then, like long before then. I'm sure there was some chemistry, there was some flirting, there were some things that shouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? That's messed up. Next one the multi-level marketing cheater, walked in on my girlfriend while she was hooking up with another guy. What are you doing here, she says. You gave me a key, remember? I ended up not working today and wanted to surprise you. 15 years later, she reaches out, leaves me a message that she'd like to talk. I figure she's doing some 12-step thing or something and wants to make amends. Nope, she wanted to try and sell me on Amway. Next story. Ask Santa to bring you a new husband. Ooh, this one's gonna be bad. Okay, while watching the Christmas parade at Disney World with our family and friends, my husband handed me his phone to take a picture of our kids. He received a dirty text as I was snapping a photo. I threw his phone in the trash and we didn't talk about it until we got home. From the trip three days later, I kicked him out and filed for divorce. Good job. Wow, good job. A dirty text. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. 
is so sad. Next one, a prank gone wrong. Had a really close group of friends who would always prank each other. One of my mates found out the Facebook password of another. So we all got on Skype together to prank him, myself included. We logged into his Facebook account, seven people in total, to make a stupid status. At the same time, we saw my partner of five years was messaging him on Facebook about how good making love was last night. <laughs> oh my gosh. And about meeting up again. Oh my gosh. That story is so humiliating because what's if she found out about that and wanted to keep it private, wanted to keep it a secret? But she can't do that now because six other people know about it now. That's so horrible to find out that your boyfriend or your girlfriend has been making love, has been making love to someone else, especially one of your good friends. Like they were all good friends. Accidentally, the other woman. I was in a long distance relationship and my boyfriend would visit once a month. One day, a friend told me that her cousin had attended my boyfriend's wedding. What? Okay, I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna read that again. One day, a friend told me that her cousin had attended my boyfriend's wedding the night before. Hold up. Her boyfriend got married. <laughs> After some digging, I realized that he had married the woman I thought was his roommate. Oh my gosh. I was the other woman the whole time. All right, next story. My mom came home to our old farm property to find my ex-stepdad porking his girlfriend in the front yard on their 35th wedding anniversary. She called the cops and had them both removed. It's bad enough that they were doing it on their property, but they were doing it in the front yard. That's gross. Next story, wedding bells never rang. Walked in on my ex fiance six weeks before our wedding. She was sleeping with one of our co workers. Quit my job there. She made me cover the remaining costs of the wedding since we were within the 90 day limits and only my name was on the contracts. I moved away to college. She stalked me. I put a restraining order on her. I got counseling. I was a mess. See, when people cheat, they like. They just ruin everyone's life. They just fuck up everything. Like everything that you've been working towards and focusing on and putting your time and energy in, it's just ripped out from beneath your feet. You're left in pieces. Literally, you're just left in pieces on the floor and you have to start over. Everything comes to an abrupt halt and you have to scramble to collect yourself because life goes on. You still have to go to work. You still have kids to raise. You still have dinner to cook and you're just left it's just a mess. I'm glad this guy went to counseling. You know, he didn't try to handle this on his own. All right, next story. My fiance dragged me to a jewelry store to pick out possible wedding rings. She took off for her place later that night because she had a work brunch the next day. She lived a little over an hour away. I took the next day off of work and decided to surprise my fiance by showing up at her place at 8.30 in the morning. I walked in on my fiance laying naked, spread eagle on the bed while a 56 year old dude was arched over her. Evidently, she had brought him home from the bar the night before. She was 26 at the time. When I said, what the fuck's going on in here? Her response was, oops, busted. Long pause. How long have you been standing there? So her reaction is so sociopathic. Like she didn't even give a shit. And the fact that she dragged him to the store, hoping this guy will propose to her. It's like, just one big mind fuck for her like she doesn't give a shit about this guy she's like hey buy me a ring i deserve to have you and you need to marry me why would you want to marry someone knowing that you're a piece of shit why waste their time why waste your own time just just go out and just like be whoever you want to be you know all right next story i came home from working a double shift and found the toilet seat up Either my wife didn't take a pee for 20 hours straight, or there had been another man in my house. And this guy is sharp too, because he caught that right away. 
right? I suspected it was her gay friend from work. I also knew that said friend was trying to sell his house. So I called the real estate agent and asked to see his place. Right inside the front door, I recognized one of her jackets hanging on in the mudroom. I proceeded to the living room and bam, right on the mantel was a picture of my wife and this guy. We divorced shortly after. She ended up marrying this guy, then cheated on him, and now they're divorced. Um, it kind of lost me when he went to that house. They pretended that her friend was gay so that she could have this guy around close to her so they could hide in plain sight, basically. Okay, next story. I came home early from work and walked in on it. The funny thing is I had wanted an open relationship, but he said that he couldn't deal with that. It turns out he was just selfish. And we see that a lot. A lot of cheaters, they wanna cheat. It's okay for them to cheat, but you can't. All right, next story. Serial cheater was outed by her husband because her WhatsApp was mirrored on their common laptop. She was apparently texting her paramour right next to him as they were in bed. Turns out that the guy was working on the laptop and saw the whole gory thing in real time. Screenshots and all. Oh, that's devastating. He dumped the whole thing on Facebook, tagged her sister and all that. Their Facebook pages were a mine of drama for days on end. They are still together. Okay, next story. You'd think people would be more social media savvy by now. That is the truth. She had a number of alternate Facebook pages under pseudonyms. One day, one of them showed up on my suggested friends and said, hey, this girl looks a lot like my girlfriend. So I looked at it. Sure enough, it was her and she had an active relationship going on with someone else. All right, so we're gonna end it right there because this is getting very long. And um, I don't want this podcast to be going on and on forever. So we're gonna put a bookmark in this and we're gonna pick up uh, next time where we left off here. You guys will hear from me again next Sunday. Hopefully, have a great week. Bye. Thank you.